Alright, so it looked like another mulligan. Toss that back. Okay, well we've got two of our colors and some stuff to do with it. So I'll keep this. And we've got a watcher exposing a salt road patrol, probably. Alright, so now all we need is green mana. Maybe some green spells to play with it too, like a rhino. Hey, there we go. That's a pretty good one. No play. We'll send it on down. Not too eager about getting this face down until I actually have the mana to turn it face up. Hey, there's the mana to turn it face up. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't have anything to do on two, so we'll just send it. We'll uh, watch her exposing War Behemoth, I think, actually, at this point, so that way he can think that the Abzan Guide is the War Behemoth, then morph that down. So after that, I can morph down the War Behemoth, and he'll think that that's the good one. So there's my psychology. We'll see if it works. I'll also hold the green back until I actually need it, so he'll be less on the guide. Okay. Pass it on over. Alright, I will take this. I don't want to trade. See if he has a land post combat. Or is he stuck? Alright, what do we see with the four? Yet another morph. Okay. Well, I don't really have to flip it at the end of turn because it doesn't cost me anything. So I will draw into my War Behemoth, which I'm going to expose to him now. And then I can morph the Abzan Guide and then play Herald of Anafenza. So I can be pretty efficient here. Alright. Four point life swing. Herald and my guide. So it looks like I've got four, so just one short of being able to flip up the guide. So any land makes me pretty happy. If I don't get a land, I still don't have anything in the yard, and so it's going to cost the full six for this. So it doesn't look like I'll play that. Yeah, I'll just let those sail through. There's nothing reasonable to do there. So four is probably just going to be Salt Road Patrol. Or if I wanted to, I could start outlasting the Herald. Actually, that'll be good, because it gives me a token to block his warrior. Or I could just draw into that. Okay. So I'll send it with both of these and flip this guy. There we go. Let's see if he wants to take a chance on the morph. Okay, well, let's flip it. Okay, so that gets me back up to 20 where I'm pretty comfortable. Alright, so he's going to send everybody. Even the token? Okay, now, so now I know he, d he doesn't have any tricks or else he would have sent the token. No, I can't block any of these guys, I just have to let them wail on me. The token will probably block here, but I'm okay with that. Kintry, that should be good, right? Uh, gives me a 4-4? Yeah. So we play that pre-combat and then morph. Yeah, play it. Morph or make a dude. I think morph is actually probably better at this point. So we'll pre-combat that just in case he's got a way to kill my guide. And send these two through. Uh-oh. Here comes the mana and the kill shot. Well, I was hoping that the warrior was going to chump block, but... I suppose I should have been able to read that kill spot or that kill shot with the way his mana was tapped. 
Okay, so this now leaves me the choice of do I want to pump out a token? I think I do. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a token here. Uh, it leaves something for the Bondkin or the Warrior. And the Spirit Warrior can block one of these guys, so it helps to, to keep things down that way. And then not too long from now, I'll be able to leave this up as a pretty good blocker in itself. Alright, sending it back over to me. Right, so we get the King of the Morphs with only 5 mana, so I'm pretty close to it. Let's see, 5 mana, so I can play Mandrels if I want to. If I just want to Outlast, I don't really have anything to do with 2, which is a shame. Yeah, one more mana would make a lot of difference in this situation. Hmm. Well, I think I probably play down the King of the Morphs here. Yeah. Well, it's got a lot of mana up. I'm going to swing first, and I'm just going to swing with the Watcher of the Roost. And we'll see what he does with his mana before I decide what I'm going to do. No reason to play anything pre-combat at this point. Okay, so he's just going to take it. And I don't want to die with cards in my hand. I, mean, I think playing Hooting Mandrels is probably the best situation here. It's the largest thing. It's the only uh, thing guaranteed to really do a whole lot of anything. So this is the best use of my mana. Get to tap out and keep something in the yard. I've got a pretty good blocking situation with these two probably going on the morphs. Uh, this can block the Horde Chief. That can go over in the Bond can. So he won't get me all in one swing. Now he might blow me out a little bit through some combat tricks if I block like that. But Okay, he is just going to outlast that guy. And if he's just on the outlast plan, I can outlast my guy. And have some chump blockers for that when it comes in. Give me a land. There's the land. Okay. So now I have enough to be able to morph two guys down. Or morph a guy and outlast. He also doesn't have a whole lot of mana up, so this could be a good time to put on some pressure with the mandrels. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So he can't kill me right off with an alpha strike. So I will actually send in the watcher as well as the mandrels. And if you didn't catch that, he'd uh, force away to token. Right, there's got to be something else to this. Alright, so he's going to make me decide on which one to kill. And I don't think there's anything in the format that he can flip up that's going to punish me for putting it all on the morph. So I'll just put it all on the morph. Kill whatever that was, Ponyback Brigade. Okay. Seems like he could have flipped that, but oh well. Alright, so at this point, he's got a Mystery Morph, and I will too. So I'll cast this one face down, and Outlast here. So that's a 3 4, and can block pretty profitably on the things that he has. If he just keeps on outlasting his Bondkin, then I can just keep outlasting my Herald. And I get chump blockers out of it. Alright, it kicks it back over to me. He's got the 4-5, and I don't have any kill spells. I do have a Horror Specs, which is not too bad. Well, let's see, I can play that face up as well as morph another thing. I can just attack him with this and kill whatever it hits. I think that's what I'm going to do first. I attack in with my bird and my Morph King. Morph King will probably eat a token. If he just lets it sail through, then I win. Alright. 
I'm not entirely sure why I forgot to play the horror specs before I made that suicide attack, but uh, that's how things work out when you're a bad magic player. And multitasking. I should also add multitasking. Alright, so I at least get to take out his morph. Okay. So we uh, one for one there. And does he have enough to kill me? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so he doesn't have enough on that, even if I had no blockers. He is at seven. So this is going to turn into a kill spell every turn for his weakest creature. And he just passes it back to me. Okay. So Har Specs and Salt Road Patrol is what it looks like for me now. I am going to play this pre-combat, just in case he kills one of my guys. Let's cast that face up. If he wants to gang block the Wooly Loxodon, I'll get a card out of it and kill a whole bunch of his guys. Alright, send it in. Now he could kill shot me, he's got plenty of mana. Uh oh. What's he got before I even attack? Is it a kill spell for the horror specs? That's kind of a removal spell. <laughs> he gets the horror specs and the loxodon. Well, I wish there was something I could do about that. But I don't think there is. So hold them back. Get a salt root patrol. survive the next turn. He's got to make a move on me at some point. That point is probably when he plays the Mantis Rider and then gives it a token. <laughs> okay, so in the air, which I can't do anything about here, he has got nine points. Holds one of them back. Okay, so I need some sort of removal spell here. And he's got, what, 11 points? And I have got 11 life. So I think that I have to kill him. I don't think I can. Because I have just, he's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I've got likewise that many. So I have to attack him with everybody, lest he kill me. He's got plenty of white mana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so he actually has to have another land to be able to get it all the way up. Hmm. So, if he doesn't draw... I, I just have to play as though he's not going to draw the land. I do need three blockers. So, like, one, two, three can't swing in with anything that these two could kill, so I really can only swing in with the Loxodon. And then I suppose pump the Herald just to, for a chump blocker and to make that slightly bigger. So I guess I swing, pump, and play. Okay. I don't know what's going to get me out of this at this point. Because I don't have enough to just go around his outside. And he should know that I've got a War Behemoth, I think, at this point. Okay, so I can send in the Loxodon, and unfortunately that is it. Maybe I should have been outlasting a little bit more. Really? Okay. Well, he gives me a chance to kill the Mantis Rider. So, four, five, six... Actually, he gives me a chance to kill both of them? That's weird. Oh no, they have first strike and I don't. I'm a terrible, terrible magic player that deserves to lose this. Okay. Well, I'm going to lose this anyway, but... Play like that. There we go. And then four mana, so I have to morph that face down. Okay, well, I'm probably going to lose this. If he draws a land, my terrible play doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, I 
forget about the whole counter first strike thing. All right, here we go with the counters, and he has got me dead. Making him tap it. Okay. So he's got a fair amount of larger guys. So I think that I won't smite the monstrous. I also got a fair amount of creatures out, so maybe I want the incremental growth. It's pretty good when you can uh, use this to make a whole bunch of tokens. So I definitely want to smite the monstrous. Should I play the incremental growth just for kicks to see if it works? All right, so I'm going to take out, well, if I take out a whole bunch of creatures, it's not going to do me a lot of good, but I'll take out the shambling attendants for that. And then what would I take out if I did put in the incremental growth? Oh, why not? It's not like we're playing high stakes anyway. I'll take out the Horde Chief and put an incremental growth and rock that with a cool 15 creatures. Let's see if I get lucky. All right, I get 